I went down to the Freedom Rally in Vancouver. And I brought a chair and my walking stick. But I was rushed out the door by my by Miss Plum, who was in a big rush to get there on time. And I thought, okay, well, that's really important. So I, I rushed with her. I had 17 minutes to get ready and I was barely ready. But I hadn't gone out in at least a week. And I feel like I'm, I'm like a caterpillar going through a transformation and being out in public to me is a big deal. I can't stand seeing all the people with masks on. It makes me think I'm in some real bad science fiction movie. And I'm looking around going, how did it come down to this? Right? How did it come down to this? I saw it coming. You might have seen it coming too, but I saw it coming, but I just never figured it'd be so easy and that everyone would go along with it. It's like 9-11 again, everyone going along with the official story when there's no, fabric no fabrication of truth. I don't know if that made any sense, but I'm still dumbfounded. And I listened to the speakers as I often do. And I'm waiting, I'm, there's a part of me waiting to go on that microphone in front of people. And I'm not sure if I'm just scared or worried because I don't, I don't know when that time's going to come where the stage is going to be set right. But I feel like I got a message that has to come through and I want to do it in front of a large group of people. But for me to do so means leaving this protected area of my little world and making things on the internet where I don't really think that anyone's going to watch them. But once you go on the stage and tell people what you think, then it's cats out of the bag. And these days, it won't take much to get you in the bad favors of so many people if you say the wrong thing, believe the wrong thing. And I know that most of the things that I believe are no. Ah, most people, they don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear it. <laughs> they don't want to hear how fucked they are. And they don't want to hear how duped they are. <laughs> who, wants to, who wants to know how duped you are? When people believe something and they really believe it and eh, let them believe it. When you know deep down, oh my God, they fell for it, hook, line, and sinker. And they're going to see you as an enemy of the state. That's what we're becoming, enemies of the state. There's a real problem, let's say, with being a a leader, let's say. Because if, if you're a leader, it sort of supposes you may have some followers, but a leader is someone who sees something that has to be done and doesn't ask anyone, they just do it. And if it's good for the society, it may be ahead of its time and it may be to be a leader, you got to be a teacher. You have to teach people a certain way of thinking in order for them to grasp whatever it is that supposedly you're going to lead them in. And that's where the problem comes in, doesn't it? Oh, man. 
that most leaders, they don't want to be leaders. <laughs> Why would you want to be a leader? Dealing with people and their problems, dealing with people who are looking for hope and inspiration and you barely have it yourself. You know, because to blaze new paths, you got to go where no one's gone before. And to do that, to, to open into the unknown, it's got to be a high degree of trust between the people that are exploring together. And that's what's been eroded from our society. There's no trust. Nobody trusts anybody. And for apparent good reason. So how do you build a, a community that's going to trust each other enough to get through the hard times of bringing any group of people together? I mean, how's that going to happen? And yet, I'm seeing it has to happen. I mean, what I see before me, we have to do. And in some ways, the survival of our species may be at, at stake. But there's, there's definite spiritual consequences for, I think, not participating in the higher <laughs> divinational plans that are going on. And we're supposed to be doing something. We're supposed to be altering our DNA. I don't know if the DNA is going to alter on its own. I get the impression that we have to do something. We have to actively participate in our own evolution. It's not just, hey, man, you're going to get through this. No problemo. Nah, there's a big challenge. And if we don't get through this, boom, you know, another root race down the old toilet. And we don't see ourselves in being like, parts of a DNA experiment. We don't see ourselves as the fifth root race or the sixth root race. Or, but there's some major things left out of the history books in terms of who we are, why we're here, what we're going through, and why we're here right now, and why all this insanity is happening around COVID and all of that jazz. But it depends on where you want to look for your truth. Because if you're coming this way, if you're coming to little cat and sweep, you know, it's not going to be along the way of the norm. We have to escape from the norm. And to escape from the norm, we have to even know that the norm exists and how we are in it. And if you don't and you don't want to, that's a sign of being in the norm to get out of the norm. Well, that's a huge step, isn't it? I mean, how many people really understand how much their subconscious mind runs them? I mean, how many people really understand that there is a subconscious mind? I don't think they have a conscious mind. Do you? Look at all the people just going along with whatever the government says, whatever the health person says. They went, 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 went. Everybody's like, yo, oh, I can't believe it. The government just got intelligent. For all these years, I was watching it and participating with it and always seemed to be kind of stupid. But all of a sudden, the government's intelligent enough to tell me about my health choices and actually not just tell me, but sanction what is possible and what is impossible in an area they have absolutely no right to be in. Do you know when the big pandemics happened? There was a technological breakthrough that was occurring at the time. So there's a correlation between the pandemic and technological breakthrough. So what they're going to do is they're putting in this 5G network and that's what's going to be the basis of all of our problems. And that is what is going to create the pandemic, but they're going to blame it on this COVID bullshit. They're all, oh man, I'm going to get in trouble. I just said the heresy of the day. You know, whatever you do, don't bring in 5G into COVID. Don't bring those together because those are the one thing they don't want to bring together. No. You got to think about it. You got to think about what is true. And I think for most people, if anyone is watching this, they've already figured things out, at least for the most part, they probably don't trust government at all. But it's those people who do. It's those people that 
support the governments of the world, the middle class, the people that get their jobs from the government, because everyone else is being sucked dry by the government in order to pay for the jobs for the people who are doing the sucking. You know what I mean? But you see, it's not the governments. The governments are just the in-betweens, but they are the controlling infrastructure and they are going to be one big problem for us all until we learn how to fight, until we learn how to win. Because you gotta aim right, and if we're not aiming for peace of mind, man, something's off. Your mind is the battleground. Your mind and what you believe is what they want to control. 